Because of the accidental fall while riding a bike, the boy picked up a stone and smashed the glass behind him. But just as he was about to leave, a naked man came out. He took the boy by the hand and dragged him into the house with great strength. At that moment, Thomas's mind was blank. He didn't understand why this abandoned house was inhabited. Just as the man was about to beat him up, a police car on patrol noticed the anomaly. The man saw the man let go of Thomas, but the next second but pulled out a detonator from his pocket, and then gently threw it. And then he took off before the eyes of the police. Thomas took the opportunity to run out of the house and leave the place as soon as possible. Little did he know that his fate was about to be changed by that man. When he returned to school, he saw the man who had followed him. Frightened, he tried to run away but was stopped by the school bully, who was usually a bully. He was so tall and big, he often used him as a plaything, but despite his grievances, Thomas never brought his emotions home. When his grandmother asked him about it, he laughed it off and used playful excuses. But that didn't stop the school bully from bullying him. One day he was blocked by the bully again on his way home from school. Although he pedaled as hard as he could, he couldn't keep up with the four-wheeled speed. Finally, the bully tripped and fell to the ground with the car door. When he was about to be beaten up again, a girl suddenly fell from the sky. Although she was no match for the school bully, she still used her resilient body to stand in front of Thomas. Not wanting to make trouble, the school bully turned around and left the place. Annie also sent him home afterwards. As for why he helped him, it was because she couldn't stand the bullying. Thomas thanked him and got out of the car, but when he looked up, he saw the strange man once again. Apparently he was being followed. He panicked and ran into the house. Cautiously, he peeled back the curtains to look out, but the voice of a stranger suddenly came from behind him, turned around to see the man had somehow entered the house, then he went into the laundry room without saying a word. He took off his clothes and threw them in in one go. Thomas tried to stop him, but he was pinned against the wall. You're gonna start acting like I belong here, or I'll kill you. I'll kill your family. Thomas was so scared that he didn't move. He also learned that the man's name was Heather. It wasn't long before his father came back. Looking at the stranger on the couch, he was confused. Then he turned to his son and asked him. At this point, Heather calmly said, I am your son's friend. Thinking about the threats he had just made, Thomas also complied with his words compound. So Heather stayed in his house with dignity. But what he did not expect was that this person actually got along very well with his grandmother. He even made her laugh. It was the first time since his mother's death that the family had a good laugh. But it also made Thomas wonder who he really was. Why was he doing this? What was his purpose? As he pondered, he accidentally saw Heather at school. He rushed after him. He was about to say hello when he was intercepted by the school bully. He was thrown into the bathroom. Thomas was not to be outdone. He stood up and pushed him down. But how could the skinny Thomas be a match for the school bully? He pushed the boy's head into the urinal and forced him to lick the liquid off the floor. When his tongue was about to touch the floor, the door of the toilet was suddenly opened. The scene was instantly silent. Thomas was glad to be saved when Heather turned away indifferently. And as expected, he was fed a mouthful of filth. When he got home, he was very upset. Why should Heather eat and live in his house? Finally, when he saw himself in trouble, he didn't help out. He yelled at Heather to get out of the house, but he was choked by the other side. Looking at his uncompromising look, Heather slowly reduced the strength and told him to wait in the car. He gets dressed and comes over. The scene shifts and Heather is driving to the school bully's house. Watch as he pulls a barrel of gasoline from the car. Thomas, who had just been a tough guy, instantly lost his cool. He keeps saying we're not going to take revenge, but Heather ignored it. He walked to a car and poured a barrel of gasoline on it. Then, under Thomas's astonished gaze, this scene scared Thomas. He urged Heather to leave, but when he was ready to get into the car, he found that the door was locked. Before he knew it, Heather left him here and ran off on her own. He heard the school bully yelling behind him. Thomas didn't dare stop fled the scene as fast as he could. However, two blocks away, he saw Heather waiting on the side of the road. He came up to him with a big smile on his face. He didn't feel any guilt for what he had just done. Thomas saw this and was not shy. He kicked him hard in the crotch. Heather bent down in pain, but he didn't blame the other man. He laughed and went back to his car. The next morning, the police came to Thomas's door. Although there was no substantial evidence to convict him, but they still took Thomas's fingerprints and photographs. He was also, not surprisingly, blamed by his father. He took out his anger on Heather. This time, Heather changed her usual behavior. He apologized to him in earnest, and then ready to take him to their secret base to play. But halfway there, they witnessed a car accident, and the driver was Thomas's benefactor, Annie. Hearing this relationship between them, Heather got out of the car and was ready to do justice. She was just sitting there and you backed right into her. I what? I don't know what's wrong with you, man. Why would you back into a car? It's fucking retarded. I don't know what you're talking about probably start talking about paying for her damages. Look at this shit. I did not back into her! You call me a fucking liar? 
realizing that the other man didn't want to settle things peacefully, he backhandedly took off his shirt to reveal a vicious tattoo. The old man's face changed dramatically when he saw this. He drove away from here. Annie next to him was bewildered. Before she knew what was going on, Heather drove the car next to her again, then opened the passenger door. He said bluntly, This kid asked me to help you, and so it was. The three of them went to Heather's secret base. But when he drove into a mansion and knocked frantically on the door, the two men realized something was wrong. After confirming that the owner of the house was not home, Heather opened the iron gate. He waltzed into the backyard. The two men confronted him about what he wanted, but Heather backhanded him into the pool. He rode his bike straight into the three meter deep pool, although choked by the water could not stabilize his body, but he still struggled to regain the shore. Then he lifted a bike and threw it into the pool. This scene stunned the two people in the distance. They watched in amazement as Heather clutched the table and died with him. This crazy action makes them dare not stay. They climbed ashore one after another. Heather did not care about their behavior, just throwing all kinds of things into the pool, while throwing all kinds of unpleasant swear words. After seeing all the good stuff being thrown in, he then turned his attention to the igniter, sprinkled gasoline on the diving board, and then lit the board and then stood up. You bitches! and he did so simply because he wanted to. After throwing away the last bench, Heather left on the excuse of a doctor's appointment, leaving the two men in place, dumbfounded. Then they left one after another, although this was their second meeting, but the two had a great time talking. It was also the first time Thomas had talked to someone of the opposite sex since his mother's death. The lack of motherly love in his heart could not help but feel a little stirring. When he returned home, Thomas was scolded by his father. It turned out that he had skipped school today without saying anything. His father had waited for an hour in front of the school for nothing. Thomas did not dare to say anything. He could only respond with a cold stare. At that moment, Heather started to make trouble again. He put his fingers into Thomas's food, causing him to swear subconsciously. And this was met with an even more severe lecture from his father. Thomas wasn't happy about this. He obviously started it. You gonna start punishing me now? Yeah, maybe I am. But if it's not the language, then it's your lack of responsibility. Yeah, having to escort you to the police station. Shit, Dad, I'm really sorry you had your ass dragged off the couch. And I'm sorry you had to put some fucking underpants on for the first time in months. That's enough! So as soon as I'm right, that's enough? I don't want to hear another word from you! Fuck this! Does that make you happy? Huh? The two of them ended up having a big fight and breaking up. Grandma, who heard the commotion, came to the restaurant. He couldn't stop crying when he saw the mess. Since the death of Thomas's mother, the family had been torn apart, and there was nothing he could do. Hearing his grandmother's words of remorse, Heather put away her smiling face. He wanted to persuade the old woman, but there was no way to say anything. He could only watch his grandmother walk by. Then he went to his room. He told her stories and jokes to make her happy, and promised her a small wish. That is to walk with her in the morning. But what he didn't know was that the moment the lights went out, Grandma's life was coming to an end. The next morning Thomas stole his father's bank account while he was still awake. He stole his bank card quietly. Then he withdrew $1,800 from a cash machine. Then he went to the dealership to try to buy back a red car. It was his mother's favorite car. Since a decrepit father can't be trusted, so why not keep something that was close to her heart? But the owner told him the car was no longer here. No matter how much he begged the boss, he wouldn't tell him where it was. At that moment, the boss's son came over. He was the school bully who had been bullying him. In the face of his provocation Thomas ignored. He just got on his bike and returned to his home despondently. But as soon as he entered the door, he saw his father sitting on the couch crying. Heather was about to call her grandmother for a walk, only to find out that she had passed away. This sudden shock overwhelmed the three of them. They sat on the couch and didn't say a word. Finally, Heather was the first one who couldn't stand it and just overturned the table. Angrily left the, Thomas, on the other hand, looked at the cash in his hand and thought about it, since he couldn't get back his mother's favors. So let's leave the money to Annie. But when he arrived at Annie's house, Heather was having sex with her. This scene irritated him completely. For Annie he was more inclined to his mother's feelings, because Annie had protected him. This made him feel warm when he had just lost his mother, so when his best friend had sex with her, he had no other feelings in his heart than anger. He picked up an iron bar and smashed it against Heather's car. When Heather came out to stop him, he wielded it relentlessly, and then he went back to his car in a rage. Then he went home in a rage. The death of his grandmother, the betrayal of his friends, Thomas lost his mind completely. While smashing Heather's belongings, he accidentally saw the scissors on the floor. Maybe it's time to take back his mother's things. 
He takes the scissors and sneaks over to the school bully's house. Then he used the scissors to pin his toe. He forced him to reveal the whereabouts of the car. The bully begged for mercy and said the car had been sent to the junkyard. He slowly let go of the scissors when he got the information, but the school bully saw the opportunity to pounce on him to the ground. When he was about to get a beating, Kaiser suddenly appeared and broke the glass. Then he picked up the scissors and cut off a piece of flesh on his nose with a lightning speed. The scene was met with a furious yell from Thomas. What the fuck is wrong with you? I just saved you. I told you I never want to fucking see you again! How many times do I have to tell you? Just leave me alone! Then he went to the junkyard. He found the car in the middle of all the junk. He couldn't wait to get into the car and feel the scent of his mother's presence. Then he fell into a deep sleep. He dreamed of his mother. His father was in high spirits then. A far cry from the image he has today. His mother was gentle and virtuous. To outsiders, they looked like a happy family of three. Until the van appeared out of nowhere and crushed the dream. Thomas was instantly awakened. Then he fell out of the car, watching the car being crushed to pieces by the huge machine. The only memories left in his mind were obliterated. When he returned home, his father expressed concern that he had been out all night. He waited in the living room all night, but when he saw the tears in the corners of his eyes, his father swallowed his words of reproach. Instead, he told him to go home and change his clothes. Then he and his father went to his grandmother's funeral. Just in the middle of the service, Heather burst in. He had a beer in his hand and was clearly drunk. He stood in front of the father and son and criticized them for their actions. He accused them of still being in the shadow of losing their wife and mother. Then he told his own story. When he was very young, he blew up a car because he was naughty. The debris from the car sliced through his lower back on the spot. When he woke up in the hospital, the doctor told him he had lost a testicle. The news was like a bolt from the blue. He went on a rampage and smashed things in the hospital. He was finally sent to a juvenile detention center. At that moment, he had only one thought in his mind, that was that he had lost his egg. Until one day when he went to the toilet and saw another egg, he realized he still had an egg, and all his functions were still intact. Why keep clinging to what's lost? Just like the father and son, you may have lost your wife, but your son is still with you. Although you have lost your mother, but your father is still here. Why not cherish the remaining family members and live each day to the fullest? Your son, your father is the only egg left on my right. Do you have to wait until everything is lost before you remember to cherish it? Then he pushed his grandmother's coffin and walked out, because he promised to walk with her once. Looking at the distant back, Thomas had tears in his eyes. Then he and his father ran together. At that moment, both father and son finally realized they had lost another loved one. The next day the father shaved off his beard, back to his former handsome appearance. But it also brought bad news, that Heather was gone. No one knew where he'd gone. But before he left, he dragged the wreckage of the red car back. And he wrote on the roof that Heather was here. 